guys. Today I am going to have a go <laughs> at making a spiral lock. So, first things we need, some fibre. I'm going to use a bat, which I got in a club and didn't really fall in love with. I apologise about the lighting. The sun's come out. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful. Wake up, it's a beautiful morning. Now, I'm going to be working in my kitchen and I don't have an awful lot of space. But so, because I'm not ready, that's that's why I'm walking backwards and forwards because I'm just, I'm not ready to actually go. So I'm going to put a towel down. Hey, you're pushing uh, Yeah, I'll be in, in a sec. I'm going to put a towel down and on that I am going to put a non-stick mat. Right, I'm going to just tripod you guys because you're, you're in selfie stick mode. So, there we go. So, I have here my towel. And what uh, be that? Right, so, obviously you want it nice and flat. You probably want to tidy your kitchen before you do this, but, you know, I just jumped such a jump straight. Now, this is um, non-stick mat that, you know, you would use in, like, camper vans, caravans, that kind of thing. Um, I bought it for when we used to own a camper van, so, and it's just a roll, and I keep it, and it's great. The other thing you want is some of this. This is wire, the kind you would use to uh, tie up your garden plants, and, um, you know, that kind of thing. I can't even tell you how thick this is. It's probably about three mil, I think, maybe. That's it there. So, um, we need to see my look, look. It's um, melting. I, I am going to cut this probably doubled. Now, I want quite a long spiral lock. I'm going to want about 100 centimeters, I think. So, I'm going to cut this at 200 centimeters and then double it. And then we'll go from there. Okay? Okay. So I've also got some wire cutters and a pair of pliers um, just to make life that little bit easier. Tape measure. So 100 centimetres is going to be that long. That is 40 inches, so you basically. Sound That's fine, I don't mind. Yeah, um, it's, well, it's just over 30, it's about 39 and a half inches. So I'm going to cut my wire to that length. Now, I've seen people, like, manipulate it through the little fucking holy things but I'm not doing that because you know I want quite a lot of it and I think that I'll just make life hard or will it oh no okay it comes through you don't need to undo the little things that hold it tied together I don't really know why they're there it's wire surely ouch surely once it's in circle mode it you know it shouldn't need it but whatever what do I know yeah, no, see, these are annoying me already. I'll be here forever doing it this way. Ow. Ow. They are sharp, you guys. These little, like, hold it in place doohickeys are sharp. So I'm just going to use my um, pliers. Now, the idea is what you do is you cut it to double the length that you want. It is trying to escape now. I getcha. Okay. Don't undo it. <laughs> you guys don't undo it because then it just starts to fucking run away with you. Now, yeah, you cut double the amount that you need, okay? And then you drizzle it together. So, I am going to open my tape measure. I regret undoing this now. Don't undo the little wires that are holding it all together because then it just goes bananas and <laughs> oh, 
I am desperately trying to flatten this out and it's not fucking working. <laughs> I am an idiot. Right, so we're going to start off by watch your hands when you're doing this as well because this crap is sharp. Okay, so that's 40 inches there. This is not fun. This is, it's like trying to wrestle spaghetti. How's that? You're funny. Right. Okay, I'm gonna use my little wire cut of things. There you go, right. You, yeah, no, that just needs to go over there out of the way. So I've now got my long, 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 I know you can't see that very well. Do you know what? You'd probably work better with the light behind you rather than in front of you, right? So I've got my long piece of wire here. Now, the trick is <laughs> to hold your two ends together and twirl it until it is, uh, you know, twirled. I'm going to start by making a bend. That is my halfway point. So I think the best thing to do will be to use a tool to do this. So I'll be right back. A pen. Oh God, the lighting is awful, you guys. I'm so sorry. I'm really annoyed now how bad the lighting is. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shove the pen in at the fold point and then desperately, ow, try and twist it like so but obviously you want it all like that so it's gonna have to go all the way down just watch it because it the whole thing tries to twirl while you're doing it obviously it is like wrestling violent with spaghetti <sighs> not only that it hurts your hands okay oh i wonder if i could hold it with the Aha! Uh -huh. You could also, <laughs> I'm learning, hold it on with the pen and then use pliers to twist it. Okay, obviously that is going to take time and probably be quite tedious, but I don't know. Twist it until you've got it twisted, whatever works for you. It's hard trying to hold it while you're trying to twist it. That's the issue that I'm having. I mean, don't worry about like the the um, wire getting damaged or scratched because you know you're going to be covering it up. Nobody's going to flip and see it anyway. This is probably the hardest bit, and it's getting harder the further down we go. <laughs> oh dear me. Because I have like knackered hands as well, so this is actually quite uncomfortable for me to do. My thumbs are screaming at me. I've got it wedged between my knees, by the way. <laughs> One way that seems to make it easier is if you separate the prongs and do it that way. That seems to uh, help a little bit. Okay. So it's done, it's not brilliant, but you know. Now I'm just gonna use my pliers just to help close the end off, if I can. <sighs> shattered, I am shattered. I'm really sorry about the crap lighting. My garden faces south. So when the sun decides to come out, it tends to be quite hard to see. Hard to see, as the little voice from the lounge just said. Okay. 
I'm not having much luck twiddling that, so. Okay. My arms hurt. Now go take a rest. <laughs> okay, so what we are going to use is I've got what's called a bat of yarn, okay, or a bat fibre, sorry. Um, this is um, a fibre that I got ages ago, and I've not used it because, you know, I just hugely hugely in love with the color um it's not colors i tend to wear so what you want is fiber that is very light you know so the re another reason i put this is because it's got a bit of like um shimmer throughout it so the good thing about a bat over a roving now you're gonna be all complicated if you don't understand the terms a bat of yarn is very, very, sorry, I pressed stop accidentally. A bat of um, roving is is very light. It's like combed, brushed through rather than compacted, which is what um, what a braid of, of, of fibre would be. A braid um, tends to basically look like a, pl a plait of yarn um, that is very, very tightly compacted because the dyeing process makes it like that. Um, if you have that, you want to separate it all and draft it out so it's a lot looser. Look up drafting roving on um, on YouTube. There's loads of uh, videos out there. Whereas a bat has been sent through a drum card, so it's all very loose anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my bat into strips. Or into one long strip because I'm a spinner, so I work with fibre quite a lot. So the way to split a bat is to do it in strips until you get down to the end and then you turn and you go back the other way. So I am going to do that all the way down. So I've got one long strip that's going up and then back down. And then I've got a little bit more here. Now um, I'm following a tutorial I've just seen by i think it was reggie's corner so you know she's probably explains it better than what i did or what i'm doing so you know if you want to see a professional do it by all means go and have a look i did want to do this professionally at one point but you know i just family got annoyed so what i'm going to do because i've still got my wee loop at, at the end is i'm going to thread a little bit of this fiber through just to sort of basically help secure it a little bit. So I'm going to, don't use your nails. Just open my loop a little bit and then thread it through just to help secure it, okay? It doesn't have to be neat because you're gonna be um, wrapping it anyway, okay? So I've wrapped it. Let's make it a little bit shorter so you can see what I'm doing. Now, what I'm gonna do is basically wrap the entire thing quite tightly, okay? And it shouldn't come apart as you're doing this. I'm gonna wrap the end a little bit more tightly than that. And if you wrap it tightly, it shouldn't go anywhere. I'm trying to close the loop on the end so it's not quite so bulbous. Not that I care. It'd probably be better if this was as straight as I could get it, but I can't get it any straight and my hands won't let me because my hands are knackered. So basically you now wrap your fibre around the um, the wire, the double duck wire. Nice and tightly so it can't get anywhere. I'm having trouble turning the the um, so 
So that's what you're aiming for. Okay, so you want to wrap it quite nice and tightly all the way down. I'm going to change the camera angle so you can see a little bit better. Okay, um, hopefully I'm going to stay in shot now while I do this because otherwise it's going to be bloody hard. So you want to wrap this as nice and tightly as you can, which is why I didn't want to have too much roving because otherwise it becomes a bit, you know, I didn't want too long a strip of fibre. Otherwise it becomes a bit of a pain to wrap because it's easier to move the roving at the moment than it is to move this blasted wire. This is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Oops, I've just knocked the rest of my roving over. This is also good because I don't know how much Sorry, I don't know how much um, um, fibre it would take to cover one because I want to cover it quite thickly. So I'm going to do it in like sort of several goes, as it were, because this is just not going to be thick enough. So, yeah, if your fibre breaks like mine's just done, that's fine. Just keep wrapping and pulling it nice and taut. And then when you get down to the end, layer it and keep going I'm not doing a great job of this. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I hope you can see what I'm doing. Can you even see? Let's angle you up just a little bit. So one strip has kind of almost brought me down to the end. I am having a few issues. Um, this is due to my own <laughs> inexperience and ineptitude. So what I'm gonna do is bring this down all the way. Now, um, the video I watched, she used a felting needle. I don't felt, so I don't have that. Um, and she used it just to help secure the ends. Well, I think that ends okay because um, of the way that I sort of wrapped it. So I'm gonna have to think of something clever to do with the other end. Okay, so that is the end of like my first two strips of fiber. And I'm a little over halfway. It's much easier to manipulate this when it's got fibre on it. So I'm just going to pull that all taut, pick up the one that fell on the floor. Oh, here. And then just continue on to the next like section, as it were. You can see what I'm doing. I'm wrapping it quite nice and tight here. And I'm just going to keep doing that all the way down to the end. Nice little bit of orange. <laughs> I don't know what this is going to look like when it's done. I hope it looks nice. The trick is as well as to not actually twist the braid of fibre. I mean, you can, I suppose, if you wanted to. But, yeah. gonna untwist my fibre because it has got all twisted up where I've been working it. So I should break this off as well. It's a bit long. That's the good thing about fibre is it felts together very easily. I don't 
don't even mind that some of this is lumpy and some of it isn't. Hey, it's textured, right? Hopefully it'll look good either way. If not, then, you know, I'll have learned anyway on, um, you know, do's and don'ts. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't consider this a waste because I wouldn't have used this fibre anyway. Although I'm looking at it and I'm like, actually, this is quite pretty. <laughs> Now, what I'm going to do at the end here is I'm just going to hold this and I'm going to create like another loop because I don't obviously want to be poked by the ends. So if I go like that, right, and then figure out a way to wrap that, I can then just sort of go the other way, if that makes sense. So do what I did but from the other end so if i wrap that like that and hold it and now if i get some of this lovely fiber look at it it looks great i'm in love with it already and i'm gonna do what i did at the other end i'm gonna loop it through this loop So I'm going to thread it through like that and then I'm going to get my pliers and close the loop as best I can going the other way. So I'm going to make sure that the end is nice and wrapped so that, that will be taken care of when we get to the next stage. And now what I'm going to do is to secure the spiky bits basically in a shit ton of fiber. Let's just turn you around and move you up. So. so this is the end of the first lot of fiber here. So I'm gonna hold that in place and then I'm going to wrap it with this bit that's coming the other way just to help secure it like so there we go now this is going to be layer number one okay now what you need okay so that looks that actually looks amazing i'm really pleased with that so now what i need to do <coughs> excuse me is i'm just going to plop that down and put some pliers on top of it now what i need to do i don't know if you can see me or not do you know what would help if i used my camera on my watch ah you can see me hi um now what i'm gonna do is i've got here a bottle okay this is a spray bottle and i'm going to fill it with some dish soap um you know just liquid dish soap which, you know, you can get anywhere. Just give it a good squirt. Because soap and water is what felts. Alright. And then I need warm water because it's winter and I don't want to be cold. Do you know where I'm going with this? <laughs> I hope so. So, this is going to be the hard part because it's not straight. And everything fucking flying. Okay, so let's get you <sighs> sorted. Oops. Okay, so I have my towel, I have my waterproof mat, I have my spray bottle, and I have my spiral lock. So first things first is this needs to be secured. So, the best way to felt is with lots of water.
Now, now that this is in case, I should be able to straighten this out a little bit more easily so that hopefully it won't bash all over my kitchen. Brilliant. So basically you spray and you spray. I don't know whether you've missed anything or not. You probably have and I didn't notice. So I've wrapped my... Come on, spray your stupid thing. Don't use cheap products. Go it back. Bells and goys. So what you do is after you've finished wrapping, I'm re explaining this because I don't know whether I've missed anything or not. You um, spray it with water and soap. Okay. Now you want water and soap because that helps you felt it. Okay. I've, I've not done very much here. Um, just enough just to help hold it all together. You can, if you have one of these mats, <clears throat> you can turn the whole thing around and use the mat to help you with the rolling. That is another way that you can do it. So put your thing down. I don't know if I'm in shot there, am I? Yeah, lovely. Put your mat and your lock down. It's like this will work in a minute. Oh, she says. want to use just your hands you can use one of these mats as well but then I find it gets a bit rucked up use that towards the end so it's, it's starting to felt beautifully and you just keep going <laughs> this will also help flatten out your wire and then any spots where it's come loose it will help with that as well Turn it round so that I don't bash into my camera. My watch thinks I'm doing exercise. <laughs> but yeah, just keep going over and over it. You want it nice and wet, you guys, okay? This is so much fun. The noise is the other end, flipping backwards and forwards over there. Sounds like my snake when she's got food and she rattles her tail. She's not a rattlesnake, but um, other... Uh, she's a corn snake. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear my son in the front room. Um, other breeds of snake also like do the rattle thing with their tail. As it dries, it will floof back out again. This is the top end. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. You just add more water and you just roll it a little bit again. Put a little bit of effort into it because it's the rolling process that helps. If you have any thin spots like here, you can always grab some more of your fibre, you know, wrap it to even it all out. Because once you wet it, it's going to felt in and blend with the rest of it. Oh God, I hope that water bottle's not in the way. So I've just wrapped it. <laughs> Oh dear, it's because I can't see the screen. Get it nice and wet. And then just add it into the felting process. Anywhere that you see any bits of lifting or anything like that, again, just spray it and Give it a bit of welly on the old mat. Hope 
touch your hands. I won't lie, it does hurt my hands. But I think I'm in love. I'm going to make another one. Because I've got some nice, um, like rainbowy, well, bluey colours that I want to make as well. So again, because I've got a thin spot, just going to wrap some of this around it. Go up and down, don't just wrap it in one place because you want it to obviously blend. So do like a crisscrossing type, um, you know, like with a bandage. You are going to tie this all down in a little while as well once this is dried. So you wrap it like that. Lots and lots and lots of your water. And then and roll it over as well. Don't just roll it backwards and forwards. Roll it so that you are felt in all of the sides. There you go. Well, that's that one. I'm really pleased with that. I'm so pleased with that. Even though my hands are sore, I'm going to make another one. I now see new potential for my entire stash of fibre. Yeah, that looks really good. I've wanted to spiral lock for ages. So, this is what I've ended up with. I don't know how well you can see the colour. It's quite nice. It's sort of like autumn type colours. So I'm going to have a go at... I'm going to put that down over on the other worktop. Oh, my hands hurt a little bit. I've got some like bluey. This has got more blue in it, this one. And like more sort of colours. This fibre. So I'm going to have a go with this one as well, just to see what I get. So, first and foremost is I'm going to cut my wire. Oh, hands hurt a bit. What was that? I'm having one of those days. So this morning I'm upstairs reading in my room. And um, a picture just fell down the back of a shelf. There's like a gap. Missed me. And then proceeded to fall. That was a bit of the thingy. Down the um, back of my drawer unit. Yeah. That was fun. Okay. Oh, don't, don't, don't get all tangled. This is a nightmare to use this stuff. Probably because I undid it all and then tried to tighten it. So you could technically say this is my fault. No, I'm calling my mat thing. So I'm just going to fight with this until I've got it all. I'm trying to hold it tight to stop it from exploding all over me. You probably were all there screaming at me going, don't undo the wire. Don't undo the way, you will regret it. All right, I'm an idiot and I wish I'd never fucking started this now. The cool thing is that I can now use the length of the first spiral lock to work out how much I need. I need more than that. So I'm going to keep fighting with this. I've secured most of it and thankfully I think the bits that I haven't secured are the bits that I'm going to need next. So don't forget you want twice as much wire because um, it just adds your strength into your spiral lock. So go down to there and flip it the other way. 
It doesn't have to be exact either, you guys, you know, just roughly work it out. That's more or less tidied back up. Okay, so the spiral up number one is going to go and sit over there and dry off. I can see a little bit where it's starting to fluff back up and maybe, you know, isn't quite as felted as I want it to be. That's fine because I can just go back in and do it some more in a minute. So. The trick to doing this is find your end. I was going to make a circle and look it over my kitchen cupboard and see if I could do it that way. But actually keeping them apart. Okay, this is working. This is working. Okay. If you have bad hands like I do, <laughs> uh, do you probably haven't seen any of this. What I'm doing is um, I've looped it over my kitchen knob up there. And then I'm keeping the ends apart so that they don't tangle in each other. And then I am basically twisting them. It's hitting everything and the cupboard door is rattling, but you know, that's, that's fine. And then you just keep twisting, basically. This is so much quicker than the way I was doing it before. That's so much easier to do. I don't feel like I'm fighting with um, quite so much now. Sorry about the banging, it's the cupboard door which is just opening slightly because obviously I'm putting a bit of tension on. the ends oh it's come off but yeah your your idea is is that you are twisting the two wires around each other to make it quite nice and neat like that so i'm just gonna keep doing that all the way down oops <laughs> you didn't want to go quite that far did you um am i in shot I think if this was something I was gonna like do regularly, I would either build up a ton of stock over the course of sort of, you know, do like a couple of day, or I would um, wear gloves while felting because it's a nightmare. Now I'm just down to the last little bit. Right. Okay, let's move you back over here. Now, back as now. I need to, obviously I've got a big loop, so I need to just try and figure out how to twist that a little bit more. to do you guys majorly worry too much about it. I'm closing the loop a little bit more just to make it a little bit easier. Okay so let's get your focus back down on the workspace. There you go. So the fibre I want to use is this gorgeous bat here. 
and yes it has the brown on the inside but what I want is I want that lovely bluey on the outside so I'm gonna open it oh wow oh wow look at the coals and unfold look at that <laughs> that is some stunning flipping purple in there look Oh yes, oh yes, so I'm going to start by taking this brown strand and then we will go up this absolutely stunning purple. this to one side while I start on the um, on the end so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull a little bit out like that turn it pretty much like you did the wire just makes it easier to thread it through the loop here okay so you thread it through and then you want to try it and close use your pliers you know because my hands just aren't strong enough i have um i have a uh, knackered um um thumbs i don't know whether it's arthritis or something so there you go i'm gonna close the loop now my, my bit of fiber is caught up in here and then you just wrap it to help catch it in okay so I'm just gonna go off the end a little bit because this will all felt when you start doing it back in now I don't want this to twirl like that so I'm gonna let it hang in fact I'm actually gonna separate that because I want to see the gold as I wrap it and I want the browns as I wrap it. So I am gonna put a little twist in because it twisted somehow as I was doing it. So I want the cold, I want the gold uppermost. Can you even see me? So I've just wrapped it just a little bit thicker on the end so that it, you know, holds and all of that lot trying to do it so we get a little bit of this gold sparkle um, but I think I'm just succeeding in covering that up it's a bit of a shame because it's pretty but it's the way it's done it right I'm going to unwrap just to try and because uh, I want to see some of this sparkly stuff which I think I'm just going to fail at every single time. So I'm just going to concentrate on wrapping it. <laughs> Got some stunning colours in this one. You have to wrap it tight, you guys. Okay, because if you don't wrap it tight, it's just going to come undone. To be honest, a lot of this gold will probably come out with wear anyway. But... Nah, that's fine. Quite thin. I want that thicker, to be honest. So, what I'm thinking, because I'm looking at that one and that's like quite thin now. And when I felt this, it's going to be even thinner. So, I'm about to lose some of that gold, I think, because I am going to. I want more fibre on there. I'll tell you what, the best way to test it would be to actually spray it. It's very thin in a few places. So what I'm going to do is 
do a bit of patchwork on this just to thicken it up, which means I'm going to lose some of that silver, but uh, some of the gold, but it can't be helped, it's just too thin. I've just wrapped it a little bit too thin, really. I want it to, I want it to be quite bulky, this one, um, because it's got to put up a thing in my hair. I mean, I've seen some people where they wrap it in fabric first, you know, to bulk it out, but you could do that, I suppose, if you wanted to. So all I'm doing is just wrapping this nice and tight again. It's quite like, this looks like chocolate caramel lattes. I think I'm going to felt this as I go. That might be an idea. And then I know whether it's too thick or not. You know, if that makes sense. I know what I mean. So like here. Because one thing you have to be aware of is if you're doing layers, you want all the nice stuff on the top layer. Because as you wrap it, it's just going to get covered up. I'm going to need to roll this quite a few times just to get it to um, felt basically and to be nice and tight. The rolling process not only helps tighten the fibre but it also helps crunch your two wires next to each other. So I'm going to get on and do that and I'll be back when they're both ready. My hands ache. But I have two okay, Sparalux. This one's got quite a lot of that purple over the top. I'm really hoping this holds because it's not very felty but um i'm going to be tying it down with some um yarn once it's dry so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to put these out in the garden because it's a nice day and i've got a unit out there that i can just lay them on top of and hopefully they'll dry off quite nicely so and then i might be able to play with one tonight so yeah um if you're unsure if you're looking at it and you're thinking do you know what that's undoing or it's not it's not as secure as it should be spray some more water like you know I've got a little bit here but like I said I think it's the purples not a felty type um, wool but you really wanna you know work 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 it backwards and forth and you want to press you don't just want to roll you actually want to press to make it like a nice tight round um, <laughs> I am a monster. Yes, I'll agree with that one. And then once you've got it and it's all nice, you need basically you have to let it dry, okay? Don't play with it, don't mess around with it, 
leave it to dry and then we will come back and tie some yarn around it okay welcome back it's actually been a couple of days since um since we first started making these biologs you're a little bit wonky <laughs> it's my tripod it's just the way it holds you so they have dried they've been sun. they went out in the sun for a little while and then i got a bit worried that they might get blown away so i bought them in just put them on the radiator they're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination um there's a little bit of loose floof here you know but i don't care i don't care the fabric will uh, the thread will help hold that down and use will just felt that in you know if you've got any loose bits like that just give it a good rub you know you could always spray a little bit more water on do a little bit more rubbing with it this won't have felted as well because it's silk you know but to be honest this came out so much better than i thought it was going to i love this one this one is beautiful absolutely in love with it so yeah uh, there's quite a lot the wire ends there on that one so i've got a good inch of bit there if i wanted to um i could have added maybe a little bit more in the way of padding because i can feel the wire in the end but you know what i'm not gonna so let's start off with the brownie one first this is the first one that i made it's quite chunky on this end but i didn't close the loop up properly i can feel how open that one is um it's something that you know, over time I might be able to close down a little bit. It's also a bit bent, so I was um, demonstrating to my son how it works. So again, it could have done with a little bit more in the way of padding, but you know, that's fine. So I've got this fab coloured yarn here. I actually made um, one of my headbands with this, and this is what I'm going to wrap this one with, because it's a great colour. So, uh, you can start anywhere. You really could, you really could. What I'm thinking is I'm going to start at one end, yeah? And I'm gonna make sure to start and wrap it a few times around the end on the wire, not off the wire. There's not much on the end of this. I didn't give it a great long sort of head bit. You've also got your loose bit. You wanna keep that out of the way, yeah? So, It's a bit hard to sort of do the easiest way to do it. I'm now caught on other bits of yarn and stickers and Christ this rock because my kid keeps putting things on my desk. So keep your tail bit out of the way. Wrap, you know, a good few times around the top. And then we are going to start wrapping around the structure of the spiral lock okay i'm just gonna get this going because otherwise i'm gonna get tangled like i just have i believe i'm supposed to be professional when it comes to you <laughs> yarn would you um you know i mean you might want some help you might want somebody to you know hold it all for you you could wrap that round and just you know Secure it however, you could use a clamp to hold it. Two hands might be a bit better for you. So what you're gonna do is you are wrapping it in like a spiraling motion down the length of the um, spiral lock. I'm just gonna wrap this because it's coming all undone. My ball is unwinding as I'm doing it, which is made, just making my life that much harder. See? <laughs> now you want to make it nice and tight because this is going to help keep it all together when it's in your hair. You could add charms if you wanted to, but you know, bearing in mind that they could get caught in your hair. Now I'm wrapping it so that there's only about a centimetre gap between each strand of the, see I've got a strand there and a strand, you can't see it very well because it's blending in with this. It's a, it's a matching um, yarn rather than a contrasting. But yeah, the idea is 
to wrap. Spiral wrap it nice and tight. And the more you use it as well, it'll help felt it that little bit more. It's The colors have come out really nice. I'm really, really pleased with this, considering this was my first one. I mean, I love the colors in the other one, but this one I'm like, yeah, I made that. work with that much yarn falling off the ball hang on so keep your tension nice and tight and just keep wrapping and wrapping as you go now if like me you have sore thumbs you might find this a bit difficult this is probably easier on one that isn't quite so long because you wouldn't need to be sort of battling with the length of the spiral lock as well it doesn't have to be even you know but it might look quite nice if it's slightly off even especially if you want it to look obvious that it's yours and not one made by spiral lock the company um there are so many things for hair that i want to have a go at making So, so far, see, you could, should be able to see that now. So, so make it nice and tight. The reason I picked this yarn is because there's bits of purple in it as well as the brown, which I'm hoping will show up nicely at some point. Excuse the noise upstairs. Daryl's been sent to bed and is playing before he goes to sleep. I've nearly got enough room that I can loop my elbow around the end. So when you get to the other end, you're going to wrap it a few times in place. I would also recommend that you do like a twisted knot on the top just to help secure it that little bit. And what you do with that is you loop the yarn to make a cross like that and then put it over the top so it creates like a slip knot. And that will just help secure that little bit more when you start wrapping back down the other way. Now you want to go backwards against that knot. You'll have a loop. So you go backwards against it. And just wrap nice and neat the other way. Oh, I'm loving this now. This just finishes it off beautifully. When you're wrapping as well, don't feel concerned that you've got to cross every little bit. As long as you're doing it evenly in both directions, it will look neat and crossed. OK, don't worry about that. Also, if you think you're unraveling the other end, don't worry about that either, because you can tidy that up. That's why you left yourself a nice long tail. So concentrate more on keeping your wrap evenly spaced all the way. And... Um, not on oh you know it's got to cross every little bit because you'll just end up getting all tangled up otherwise you're gonna have some bits where your fiber might be bulging like that again you know what don't worry about it it's a handmade item right you've made it so be proud of it don't worry about what anybody else says And who cares what anybody else says? When you are getting to the point that you're fighting with the end, you know, because you're in the middle and your arms aren't long enough, hold the yarn in place with your thumb and forefinger 
while you um, sort the tough out, just to keep the tension on it. So what I do is I do a couple of wraps holding this bit, then I hold it in place while I like catch the length up with myself if you like. My hands are aching quite a lot because I've done a lot of housework today. The bane of my existence. So creating the tension is quite hard. But now that I can set so now I'm going. I get my arm around the outside. So you can see how I'm wrapping here. Now, when you get to the top, don't forget, you've got this one to be kept nice and tight. And you're going to bring your other one up as well. Also, wrap that a couple of times around and then just tie the knot. Okay, and then snip it off. Yay! One spiral lock. Awesome. Now I've just got to figure out how the hell you use it. So, don't think that's it somehow, do you? So I'm going to wrap the other one, and for that, I'm going to use some sparkly yarn because I've also just made a headband with this yarn and uh, this has got a definite sparkle to it. Um, this yarn, I don't know what this was that I wrapped the other one in. It was um, an unlabeled yarn that was in my stash. This yarn is Signature Sparkle 4-Ply by West Yorkshire Spinners um, and it's 75% wool with added sparkle. So I don't know if it tells you the wool types in here. No, it doesn't. I know 35% is Blue Face Leicester, but there you go. Perfect for socks. And it has a wide range of colour on it, which is great. So I'm going to create my bit of tail. I've got a lovely red to start with. And I'm going to wrap this one quite like tightly mainly because the silk and the sparkle in it, the, the gold glitter, doesn't felt. I mean, another way you could do it if you wanted to is actually like rotate this as you're wrapping it. If you've got a big long one like this, like I do, you know, that's another way you could do it. Let's just, put them there. just check your tension, okay? Make sure it's nice and tight. All the way around. It's nice because it's a nice red at the moment. The yarn's going to change colour in a minute. She said it's not. It's red for flipping miles. It's going to go blue in a little while. You probably only see two colours on this. Uh, where this um, this yarn is wool as well it will actually fell into the um, spiral lock as I wear it. And then I, all I would do if I need to add more yarn, which I think I possibly would do just for um, structure on this bit, because this is loose, it's silk, and it's already proving to be a bit of a pain. Yeah, the silk is bunching up under the under the yarn, but that's fine. I don't mind that. Hey, I've learned something today, you know. I knew the silk was going to be slightly problematic because I knew it wasn't going to felt as well. And I think over time, the silk might well break down and come off, but. Okay, 
love the colours at the end of this one. Okay, so we're coming up to the top end. As I said, work out where you loop. So that's where mine ends. Okay, so all of that is spare. There's no point in me wrapping that because it's just not going to hold. So I am going to go probably about there. I'm going to wrap it several times. I'm going to do the loop. So make a cross and stick it on. And I'm going to do that a couple of times. And then you just basically go down the other way, back across itself. And as long as you keep everything even, it will look neat, okay? So I'm now on the blue, which I don't know if you can see that quite as well. I love that bit of gold there. I don't know how well that's going to hold, but... Hopefully, you know, the yarn will keep it in place, at least for a little while. I mean, these may be too long for me, I don't know. Uh, Spiralox themselves recommended I got an 80 centimetre, these are 100. But, I can always make a shorter one, can't I? Sorry, I've done a lot today and my hands are killing me. I was supposed to finish this video yesterday so that I could get on and do all of the housework today. <laughs> I didn't. I did the housework this morning. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog in the background. She's elderly and tends to sit grumbling to herself quite a lot. She doesn't actually want anything before anybody worries. So, yeah. Can you see that? It's got a nice mix of red and blue probably won't get another colour out of it because the pattern repeat on this yarn's quite long the colour repeat rather I mean if you want to you could wrap several times you know you could go up and down up and down um, Especially if you've got a colour changing yarn like this. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, I've seen some that have been wrapped with one type of yarn and then wrapped with another. Um, I think some of them get wrapped in like embroidery floss because that tends to be quite silky. Um, I'm quite happy sticking with my yarn because I've got lots of it. I must admit though, I've been <laughs> eyeing up all the bats upstairs. Right, now this is where the top of this one is. So I am just going to get up to scratch with it. Okay, so that I did a loop on and that wants to go that way. So I will bring this one up. I'm just getting into the bloody pink and purple now. Typical. And then what I'm going to do is cut the end off of that and I'm going to tie it in a nice tight knot. Uh, obviously, if you are using yarn, don't go like too ballistic and make it too tight because you're just going to end up breaking your yarn and you don't want that. And like I said, if you have a multicoloured yarn with a long repeat, you might want to go back down just to, just to get some colour in it, you know, more colour in it. But yeah, there is Spiralock number two. Now, if you are bothered by this, you could, before you cut it, give yourself a longer tail and thread it actually inside the um, fibre. It, it really doesn't bother me, so I'm not that worried about it. So yeah, that's all nice and stuck up that end. It's on the wire. It's on the wire this end. I obviously didn't give myself a lot of, um, you know, nub room that end. But there you go. That's both of my spiral locks done. So, yeah, tell me what you think, yeah? Um, <laughs> I'm going to have a play with these a bit later on. And um, 
see if I can get anything going with them. Because, like I said, I haven't, um, I've never played with them. I've always wanted one, which is why I made it. So, yeah, really easy to make. It took me 20 minutes, I think, just to, just to felt it. And, you know, I really like this one. I didn't think I was going to. This was my test one. And I was like, eh, it's fine, because if I don't like it, you know, it's it's nothing. But the colour that this has come out in now is a beautiful array of browns and, you know, reds. And it's just, it's it's really nice. I'm really, really pleased with it. So, yeah, chuff for both of those. I've got a posh one with some purple silk. And then I've got this one. I will be making more. I can guarantee it. I will be making more. So, uh, yeah, if you make one, you know, let me know down below. And... Um, you know if you pay if you make it post it on instagram and tag me i am pretty tapper over there and um yeah it'd be really really nice to see spiral locks made by people who took inspiration from me because i took inspiration from other people and uh yeah i would like to thank uh Uh, hang on, I will, I will find you in a minute, hang on. Reggie's Corner. Reggie's Corner um, made the video that basically I used to make these. She did a couple of things differently. She needle felted the ends, well, I don't have needles for needle, needle felting, um, you know, but other than that, I think I more or less did it the same way. But she was definitely the, the guiding light, if you like on mine so yeah please you know uh feel free to give this video a thumbs up any comments questions suggestions feedback please do leave them down below like i said if you make these and you post them up on your instagram please do tag me um i would really really appreciate it thanks so much for watching today i hope you enjoyed it just as much as i did and i'll see you next time take it easy guys bye